And she gets that back up a little bit. Two to one, three to one. Okay, you're like us. We don't we don't hammer. <laughs> it's the five star hotel. But Kurt's got eight to one. Eight staff to one person. So he's filled out the Okay, in what we are, who we are, we've got a, a brief overview. Uh, all of you know, in, in background terms, our legislature has two new individuals, Kurt Favella, who's down here, who's going to speak with well, speak for Dow Okimoto. Her specialty is education. She's a teacher, or was a teacher, and now I think is a substitute teacher. But she's also trained as a CPA. A, an accountant. So she's very, very detail-oriented. And from, from the newest of our representatives, we have the, not necessarily from Lachi being the oldest, but she's the most seasoned, Cynthia Thielen, who is an environmental attorney. She represents Kailua, and she has been in Papua, she did? So, since 1991. Uh, uh, she and I came in incumbents uh, together, but she, unlike me, didn't leave. Like, I left eight years after that, so <clears throat> you know, I've been in, I think this is my 11th term, so 22, so she's got at least 30 some years. She's probably the senior member, except for the college, say, I think it's the same, that's what I was Especially uh, Laura is agriculture, she comes from the Peterson egg farm. She is the former Miss Hawaii, all of you know, but most of you don't know, she's a PhD student at the University of Hawaii in Education and Communications. So she knows optics, she knows communication. And guess how many times she has an opponent? Two election terms, that's four years, almost like a senator. Oh no, even better than a senator, you go four years, you don't even have an opponent. So, she also sent to regret. Bob, is there anything else I should, should say about you other than yeah. you sit on the Finance Committee, Military Affairs. Bob did a fantastic job last week honoring Vietnam veterans, one of which was myself. Bob, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, anything else you should know about you? Anything else you should, you should know about me? Uh, Kai was telling me this morning, oh, you're a former Peace Corps guy, and I am, was. I was a volunteer in Borneo. Director in East Timor, was the United Nations uh, Chief Technical Advisor in Malawi, Africa, and was the president like Al Frenzo here. Al was the presidential appointee under Bush in USAID in the Office of Democracy and Governance. Uh, you got yours in a couple of months, mine took a couple of years plus. So being a presidential appointee is not an easy, uh, quick proposition. And I'm on the health committee and the co-founder of the Small Business Caucus. Uh, and other things that will come maybe in the question. Okay, the, the next slide is like, what did you guys propose? You know, I said earlier, we play offense and we play defense. The job of the loyal opposition is generally defense because the bills that come through are generally because of there's 46 of them in the House, and there's five of us in 51. In the Senate, there's one senator, and there's 24 Democrats. We have one Republican and 24 Democrats. So what we did, knowing that the cost of living, and a lot of you have that on your mind, is a very important issue, and breaking up of families is a big issue. Our Kamalaina package basically featured a number of things, and I'll have the, the one with the Kamalaina come home, one of the big reasons, and this is Trevor from our office, uh, I introduced my minority to the table. Trevor is here. Trevor, thank you for joining us. Uh, and the Kamaaina package had two major features of which we'll cover, because I think we covered that in our, in our last meeting. One was Kamaaina come home. We have a family split up because kids go off to the mainland, like my daughter, who's in law school, graduates. Your kids are now on the East Coast. Coming back home is very difficult. So, and the bill basically we introduced it. If you graduated from high school here, 
you went to the mainland and you got a BA or above, we will make sure that there's a down payment for a home to come to have you come back. Now, I don't know if Bob would do that. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that either. Okay, wait, hold on a second. As a Vietnam veteran, you know, it's fine that you don't like it, but let's be, look, here's what I'm going on the ground with. You can say anything that the ground if it's said politely. Yeah, yeah. She did say it politely. She said she didn't like it. I don't it. like that. It sounds a little bit like, hey, you're stupid. No, no, no. no so no, let's, no. let's be civil. That's one of the ground rules. No, 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 I just said I don't, I kind of okay. don't like okay. it. Okay. Say, you know, you could probably do something better. Because I'm a, 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 Let me explain what those who have been okay. elected have done. No, you just put it in. Like the Veterans Affairs, Vietnam veterans, Desert Storm veterans, don't have to put a down payment. That's the biggest barrier to home ownership in the state of Hawaii. So if you come home, you've got to get your own job. <clears throat> We're not giving you a job. We're giving you a chance to own a home so you'll come back home. And quite frankly, we are losing, through a brain drain, multiple, multiple talents. Yes, Tyler. Um, I think the reason why I disagree with this particular okay. bill is that why should we as the taxpayers, we're already strapped. I mean, come on, as far as taxes and the cost okay. of living here. I haven't finished my explanation. The guarantee is going to come from a REIT. A REIT is a real estate investment trust. Real estate investment trust, which now, right now has a free ride of about 60 plus million per year. It's a free ride. We are saying, put aside some money as a guarantee, and with those come and come home individuals, and we have not yet determined because the bill did not get a hearing. So as you anticipate, some of these things, like a lot of the bills that are on the, on the uh, roster right now, Republicans introduced them like the emotional dogs and the regulation of those. I introduced them three years ago. Those things will be picked up later on, as is the rebuild. So the point is, that was an idea to bring people to home, because here's what we fear because of the cost of living. Hawaii is going to become like Bermuda, where it's so costly, all you got is rich people here. Now, is that what we want? Or we want our kids to come home? So we got to be able to leverage it with carrots and sticks. If this is a carrot, it's not going to cost taxpayers anything. Be very clear on that, Kai. It's not going to cost you anything. Well, then why not help the Kama'ana that are here? Okay, I'll get to the Department of Wine Homes where we yeah, give the sharp yeah. stick. To I home. think we have to emphasize that this is, you're, you're saying the taxpayers are strapped, but it's zero cost to the taxpayers. It's zero cost to the taxpayers, but these are people that left, they have an education, and they've come back. There's women and children and families that are here that are struggling to get a down payment together. So instead of picking a select few that actually have the tools in their tool belt to come here and actually develop and save for their own down payment, why not help the people that are here, that stayed, that didn't leave, that are struggling every day? <laughs> but the, the Democrats did take part of that. They took the part of the real estate investment trust being tax free. Yep. They said, okay, and, and that's Peter Savio's idea. Peter Savio is brilliant. He comes in and he says, Alamana Center is a real estate investment owned trust. When they sell that, they don't pay any state taxes. Me selling a house, I pay more in taxes than when they sell Alamana Center. Thank you. He says, this is unfair. The local people are getting ripped off. Savio is brilliant. And so the Democrats said, Oh, gee, we're leaving all that money on the table. We better get it. So Gene was saying, well, if you're going to get all that money, how about just give it a little bit here for the local people who want to buy a home? Okay, well, they took that part out. And I understand your arguments, by the way. The other thing Savio brought up, and he's, he's you know, he, he channels Jack Kemp. He says, look, affordable rentals do nothing. They keep people in poverty. You stay there for 10 years, you're renting, you're renting, you're renting. When you get out, you have no equity. So Savio says, let them put equity, let them earn equity from these affordable rentals. So when they leave, you know, maybe 5% of their rent every year goes to an account where they have equity. So when they leave, 
it's almost like they're selling house, they have a bit of seed corn, and they can and maybe buy an entry level condominium. Sammy was one of these brilliant minds that comes down there, and they finally started listening to him. Uh, but anyway, the Real Estate Investment Trust, they took part of the idea, which was to close that tax loophole, which was huge. It was costing us money, and they will not leave because they come here and are, in Hawaii, our real estate doubles every 10 years. Where's my realtor friend? Right? Every 10 years. Well, ago. lately there's been an, there's been well, downward adjustments for the last, what, two years? Right, but yeah, yeah, over 10 years, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's impossible. Cyclically, it, if you look at <coughs> the board of realtors from 1940 yeah. to today, you know, it goes up and down, but every 10 years it doubles. So, we, because we're on an island, the land is fine. So, anyway, the Real Estate Investment Trust would close that loophole, and that was a good thing. 70% of the real okay, estate I'll market the, is VA. Yeah, but that's why, and the, and the reason I'm, is I'm because they have a down payment. I understand the real estate investment trust. So I look at the long-term effect. Those are investors that have come, been brought into Hawaii. Maybe they're on Hawaii already. Investing in these out of Moana Center. Now, the billions of dollars. Of yeah, taxes. they don't get taxed at the state level. They still get taxed at the federal level. But would it now doing that make the make Hawaii an investment or investor no go zone per se? Because why would an investor want to come to Hawaii with the opportunity to invest? It's diminished. The, 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 the value perceived value might be diminished. Yeah. It's an excellent question. You build a shopping center in Dallas, Texas. In 10 years, it might appreciate 20%. Yeah. You build it in Hawaii, in 10 years, it appreciates 100%. Everything, I mean, the, the real estate numbers that I've been doing, she knows, we both do it cyclically. Every 10 years, everything doubles. You see that in your house, like we bought our house for $212,000. It just appraised for 600. I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't buy anything else, but, but that's Hawaii, because we're on an island, so we're in a unique situation. Uh, well, let me, no, wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Everyone wants to invest in Hawaii. The opinion you have, Brett, is what I used to have. We are a capital short nation. I mean, a capital short state. So if we do that, we're going to cut it off. The point is, everyone wants to invest in Hawaii, and Saudi or that he's quoting knows where the money is. The Hughes Corporation is here. All of the big multi billionaire companies of which these guys are. So from a tax generic point of view, yeah, we shouldn't do that. But in terms of a fairness, Every corporation in every state gets taxed except this one. And that's where it's an equity issue. Now, Kai, you had your hand up first. Or you're I'll, I'll let Marissa go ahead. Okay, Marissa. To me, it's that's a housing flaw. Apparently, we're so limited with what we can offer to our older people. We only get four things, five things. We get condo apartments, townhouses, single homes, right? I think that's wrong. All of us struggle in the mainland. You know how open space is up here. We have so much open spaces. Our state of Hawaii is the biggest landowners, right? What are they keeping those land to themselves? Our people are leaving because they can't go to the bank and have a credit and get a mortgage. Why can't we just go ahead and set aside a piece of land? We got that huge plenty. About 15,000 Hawaiians are homeless, houseless in Big Island. Why can't we just start from there? Let's do a prototype up there, set aside a piece of property and land. It could be property, you know, I would say like regular private company or state land, offer to those guys. Hey, if you have Kaheli, have 600 acres. That sucker got plenty to offer to the Hawaiians. Have him set aside, let's put ahead an underground utilities, have him rent it. You know, four or 500, like in Washington State, four or 500 dollars per RV or, or modular homes. So their house, then they're gonna be on our street. We're selling tourism. It's just like mindset state of Hawaii keeping it for themselves and you know that's what it is that's a big fight so we have to offer as a legislator you guys should put a bill offer every single you know private owners in the big island should offer that in the state especially the folks that lost their homes from the Lailani states those lands shouldn't be sold they sold it to the Canadians Canadians sold it to the locals my uncle is one of them that bought it from the Canadians so Democrats in old days created a permit, they zoned it, sold it, it's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be like, I would say, just leave it alone, do not put any homes on it. You know what I'm saying? It should have been condemned, they sold it to the public. Now they have no homes. 
So but my point is, they shouldn't limit what kind of housing they put on every single land. Is well taken. We are almost fifty thousand units short of housing. No, no, no. I, I just want to hear your input but, to that but, one. But my point is, watch what you wish for. There's a bill that does exactly what you say. Stanley Chang, he wants to model the Singaporean high rise. Everybody who's got a job gets an apartment. It's going to be state land. It's going to be as low cost as possible. And it's going to cost you, the taxpayer, a lot of money. So be careful what you wish for. We can do that, and it's in this bill by Stanley Chang. But that, it takes I, like five have you years. you been to Singapore? Do you know what Singapore is? Oh, yeah. It's smaller than my this, and it's got three times there. the population. Because even taxi drivers and everybody else lives in a high rise. That housing issue is coming. No, but that takes five years. And you know, and nothing possible in this well, place. Well, they're going to have a, probably a... And we have, again, we should at least okay. offer that to the private... Private landowners in the Remember, we're talking about Kamalena come home, and we just offered an issue. I want to go on to the second part of the Kamalena come home. And that was what is happening in Eva at Campbell High School with the Goodyear Tire Company. Bob, you want to outline what we did with Kamalena come home for vocational training? Well, what we're trying to do is link up the schools. We don't have a real vocational vote tech program here. If you talk to the DOE, oh yeah, we, we, we have it. Now, if your kid wants to learn, let's say, cosmetology, your child has to go to the guidance counselor, set it up, I want to learn cosmetology, okay, you got to get your own transportation, HCC, twice a week, and uh, we'll give you college credits for that, and then the counselor will work with you. That's their systemic proposal. Where in the mainland, you go into 10th grade, you sign up, half the day you're in cosmetology, and the other half you're in reading, writing, and writing. Right? And it works splendidly well. I took my wife to visit one last year, and she was blown away because she grew up here. She said, oh, wow, you've got to do this in Hawaii. This is, what's wrong with it? Auto tech, beautiful shop, cars all up on it, computerized, kids learning. It's not just a twist, a twist and wrenches anymore. It's learning mathematics, computer skills, because you have to have that to work on a vehicle, right? And uh, it's just, we are so far behind. So the Goodyear, Tire shop, automotive repair shop in Ever Beach closed. They came to Campbell High School and said, Look, we can't afford to lease over here. We'll work here, we'll train your kids, we'll bring all our equipment, no cost to you. By the way, there's no private sector competition in Ever Beach for this service we're providing. There's no garage, so we're not going to have unfair, undue advantage. That's very important. Can we do it? The school's like, Yeah. And we'll train your kids to be A1 auto mechanics. Fantastic. So Favela and I met with the principals, the district superintendent, uh, they, they call them CAS, complex area, and uh, they're moving forward on this. There's just a few legal issues they got to work out with the attorney general, but uh, that program, I hope, is in place next year. So, yeah, but you have to think out about it. But that's just one niche. I mean, we have a systemic problem. It's Zika. Good morning, my name is Peter Zika. Um, I'd like place that we have the largest dropout rate, the highest unemployment, the highest drug problem is the West Side. And we have spoken when we brought the aviation people onto the uh, state legislature, they've been there at least two or three times that I know of in, in addition to the summit. We really don't need another competition. We don't need another barber. How about a philosopher? We the president. Be, well, I mean, <laughs> philosopher in terms of peacemaker is a duty. Um, but we really need more high tech, or high tech people. I would like the West Side to do something related to aviation. Right now, China, Korea, Japan has a shortage of pilots. American trained, Boeing trained pilots. We put, we relocated our mechanic school to the other island. Right now, that growth is not there. All of the people would have to basically relocate from this island to the other island to get the training, and then there's a shortage of housing. We at least have housing and families where they can stay with. We should be able to train pilots. Those salaries are running 120000 150000 That's a house payment to take young people off the streets that are hustling drugs you know, and put them in jobs that really can sustain them. I would like to be able to support high-tech jobs that we have the wherewithal to do it. 
also a cyber spy center. We're the closest, we're, you saw in the newspaper, we're, we're the most vulnerable state to be hacked. We could have fiber uh, training centers for our local kids on the west side. They've got the smarts, but they can go out the cash without even thinking about it. We have the time to be able to do it, and I'd like to be able to see something like that. All right, one thing at a time. Nostradamus, west side airport. In 20 years, she's right that the uh, Barbers Point Airport is going to have all the cargo from FedEx, UPS, yes. all that is going to come in there because Honolulu Airport is just getting too full and, and the traffic is too much. There's going to be vast improvements there. ACC used to have a pilot program, they shut it down, and now they move it to the big island. Yeah, that's foolish. I don't know why they did that. But you're right. And you're also right about the kids on the west side. I don't want to denigrate cosmetologists, but if you have a, a child who's 13, 14 years old and he's a behavior issue, and you tell him, look, Johnny, you don't want to stay quiet in the reading, writing, math section this afternoon. You're not going to go to get to wrench on cars, which is what you like to do. You can go to study hall. But the point is that you have to cut 50 heads to make a house thing. With a job such as aviation, or spy, spider spying, and all that kind of stuff, you can make a house payment off of a check or two checks. Right. We need to be getting out of this low uh, education thing and really get focused for the future. And if we don't do so, we're really cutting our life. I think, I think uh, let me summarize. I think you're correct, but it's going to take a private sector coming out to Barbara's Point Airport with innovation to drag the public sector. Uh, let, let me add on to what you, one of your handouts are. These are all the bills that we've talked about. What's conspicuously absent is economic development. This is something that the status quo refuses to introduce. Case in point, I have a reso on a moon base alliance on the Big Island. We have the simulated environment of the moon, which we are not taking advantage of. We've trained a couple of, we've trained a few astronauts, but right now with Hank Rogers at the helm of, of Pisces, it's the space agency that's related to this, the Office of uh, Business and Economic Development. He wants to train all the astronauts in the world here, which are high-paying, STEM, engineer type of jobs. But again, the guys who've got the 45 votes don't see economic development. They see all of these other things, <coughs> taxation and other issues. And that's where we need the numbers. We win the arguments on, you know, you hear this articulate guy, we win the arguments on but the votes. And that's what a role of a political party is, to recruit, select, train, fund, and then work for their success. Not necessarily competing with them and say, you, ought to be, you guys are not governors. These are the things who govern, the ones who vote govern. You either got to run for office or get more people in office. That's the bottom line. But the point that she's making is economic development, which they have pushed aside because there's a lot of vested interests Leave us at the status quo. Yep. That is, in and right now we are losing their own. And their economic development is always, it's, it's always this special purpose revenue bonds <laughs> targeted to a particular business, Billy's Water Shop on the Big Island, 100 million special spurs, they call it spurs, special purpose revenue bonds. And that means they can borrow rates at the state rate, and the state kind of guarantees it. You always, you always see that every session. Whose deal is this, right? Uh, why don't we? Yeah, we, we haven't even gone to the crossover yet. We've only kind of been historical. So with your indulgence, we will carry on with the bills. First, let's go to cannabis. Uh, the decriminalization slippery slope bill. Uh, let, let, let me be frank. Uh, we just put out a press release that I want you to know when I was speaking for that bill, I said, frankly, and I think truthfully, Mr. Speaker, it's probably true that the majority of us in this floor, in this chamber, except for a few, have probably tried marijuana. As soon as I said that, Della Bellotti stood up and said, may that remark be stricken from the journal. So we put out a press release that says, censorship does not belong in the House of Representatives, because I call the spade a spade. This is a slippery slope for the actual legalization or, quote, recreational marijuana. And there's a record in the states that do that. Bob, you want to have speaking on your 
uh, it's coming. It's the this. We're a little conservative, believe it or not. And socially, there's two states in the nation who don't have any sort of gambling. Hawaii and Utah. Marijuana. There were about 15 Democrats who voted either no or with reservations. When a Democrat votes with reservations, that's a soft no. I really don't like this, but I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm going to vote with reservations. Um, so it did limp through. I think it'll pass uh, within the next time there's a Democrat president, they will fully legalize it. Uh, right now, with the Trump administration, the, the federal policy remains the same. So uh, that's just what they're waiting for. And in the prophetic words of former representative, now administrative law judge, Marcus Oshiro, he said, you get medical marijuana dispensaries. Three to five years, you're going to do decrim and legalization. And true to what Marcus Oshiro is saying, that's where we are. OK, moving right along from that, which uh, is moving very fast, is do you think that defense practice nurses should Perform abortions. Believe it or not, that's it. Now, remember the climate that we have in this nation. The New York State Assembly was giving high fives by legalizing infanticide. This is kind of a Me Too bill, like let's make it more widespread, let's make it more so anybody, particularly advanced practical nurses, and they are to be highly respected, they are very qualified, but to make and proliferate more abortion. I think all the parties except one vote, we all voted uh, that bill down. So that, that is a bill that's moving and likely. Well, let me tell you real the, quick. From go ahead, Henry. Talking with other APRNs yeah. who are uh, able, are RNs that are able to go ahead and dispense uh, medications. Um, they do not uh, like this because two things. Number one, as a professional, they have to go ahead and have E and O insurance. Their E and O insurance is going to go up because of being able to dispense this um, drugs for for um, abortions. And the big problem is the failed abortion, a failed abortion where somebody can, where the, the, the fetus or the <clears throat> the baby lives, then they're going to end up worrying about being sued to go ahead and for the for the. Uh, quality of life of the, of the child. So that's one of the, the big things against that. And the thing is, is I mean, what is it, 280,000, 88,000 abortions a year is not enough for Planned Parenthood. Yeah. They have to go ahead and get um, APRNs to do it. And so that's the only problem here um, that I, I see. But it's going to be impossible. The doctors, the docs don't want to do it. Number one, they think it's, not, it's, it's, it's beyond their time. They don't want to go ahead and do it. Many of them have opted out of not doing the procedure. And so what they want to do is just say, hey, let's go ahead and offer it. And that's, that's the, the demo. Well, and it, it, it's the other, other sides. Um, of the OBGYNs, the yeah. ones who really Sorry. are really yeah. 50% of those choose not to do abortions. Right. And those who do it do have, have to go ahead and pay an, 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 uh, increased uh, liability insurance. I mean, you know, so it just makes sense to. If it's already happening, why if it's working just why, why, why fuss with it? You know, one of the good things about meetings here is that ideas exchange and have consequences. If you remember when we first met Shirley, I think it was Rita who said, would you guys introduce the Born Alive, uh, Born Alive Infant Protection Act? Yeah. Kyle picked it up, we introduced it, and for the first time in 20 years, Republicans, we actually had a pro-life bill heard because of your caucus. There was a lot of testimony. There was a little bit of a rancor by some who said, you know, you're denying, you're putting the, the Constitution upside down. But people had a chance to speak out. The votes were six to one. I'm the only one who voted for the bill, but they changed it. But the fact that Mizuno held the hearing, uh, contrary to a lot of things that was, we had a lot of pressure not to hear it. And for 20 years, there's never been a pro-life bill. So really, you're not here, but if you're watching, thank you for doing that, and hopefully other good ideas and exchanges will come out of that. Zing. Um, this bill originated, the, the basis of this bill originated actually in New York, and unfortunately, New York is the capital of uh, black male babies being awarded the highest state in the United 
United States where black male babies are aborted. So I'm thoroughly against this. And if the idea of Planned Parenthood is to carry forth eugenics, it's being done. Yeah. Zinga, you're a historian because you look at the founding uh, of Planned Parenthood, I forget her name. Uh, Marcus Sanger. Sanger. Oh, yes. She wanted to basically <laughs> don't be don't be black don't population be. down. All, uh, yeah. all co colors. Yeah, all Anything colors. Anything that was not color Asian. Hawaiian. All colors. That includes oh, okay. all, all colors. colors. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was their, their all form of the uh, ethnic it. cleansing yeah. at that time. A couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, they had a resolution honoring Margaret Sanger mm. on the House floor. Mm. All I did was read her quotes. I don't want to miss her speaker. Margaret Sanger. The Negro. 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 Yeah. 
mean, well, it's not the jungle primary. That's the first thing. It's, so there's a difference. What California does is called a nonpartisan blanket primary, if I'm not mistaken. So that is, no matter what party you're on, it's just one ballot, whoever the top two. In the case of 2016 California Senate, it was two Democrats running against yeah. each other. That's not what this is. What this is is, so say there's seven candidates on a ballot. You rank your top, top seven, one, two, three, whatever. So say it's the Democratic primary. I choose Ed Case, Doug Chin, and Donna Kim. So last place is bad. So all of her vote, votes are null. But everyone of her number one votes, their number two goes to that next person. So say it's Connie Elliott. They go to him. Then he loses. So that person's number three vote then goes to the next person. And that's say that's Donna Kim. And that process repeats itself until someone gets over 50%. The goal of which is that you're not stuck with like someone winning a plurality and they're not duly elected or democratically elected. They want to get a majority of votes. Do you guys understand all that? Is that multiple votes to make that go up? I didn't understand this. Uh, yes, so you're, you're constantly recounting ballots when candidates get um, eliminated. They're, they're basically so, taking so your vote and redirecting it to another candidate if you're a candidate. Let me personify this yeah. in that these two gentlemen are in my office. They were arguing about what it means. <laughs> one said this, one said this. One was talking about a jungle primary. This one is a separate uh, primary. So I said, OK, guys, call the Office of Elections. They'll know. Yeah, they will. What happened when you called the Office of Elections? They had no clue. They did not, they did not know what it was. Yeah. But in the hearing, it's another $556,000 to implement. So if you're confused, Al, if you're confused, everybody's confused, including the Office of Elections. Charlize? Yeah. This is this is better than the other one, which is the jungle primary. Which but they can do a couple votes now. I'm sorry. sorry. They, they don't count votes properly now. One vote. I mean, uh, we, can, we can recount and recount. And there's no well, that would be that would be disenfranchising me as a voter because so, if I voted for you, and then you didn't get the majority, and then they took my vote and gave it to sure, maybe I don't want her. Maybe well, I don't even I like her. Yeah, we go to the second. Your second. Yeah, my second. Oh, so okay. take, for instance, the, the, uh, the special election which happened, I think it was yeah. Hanabusa, Bijou, and uh, Ed, Case. Ed Case. Okay, so Hanabusa and Ed Case got the most votes, and Charles got the least votes. But but since since uh, it was a uh, nonpartisan special election, they, they split the vote to the point where Charles got the majority of votes because Hanabusa and Case split the votes. And therefore, he won. In the ranked choice voting system, he would not have won. Yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah. Yeah. So basically, whoever gets the least amount of votes is eliminated. And their ballots are now looked at again to see who their second choice was. And their votes are now placed upon their second choice candidate, which would have been a case for Hanabusa. Which so is so the, a, 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 the answer to the fraud. question then, when we go in and vote, you have one for choice one, two, and three. And then, who, if your so first right. choice, if your first, so you don't have to have like a, an election on uh, October 7, 8, 9, 10. What you do is you just have one where you have three, three different choices. And if your first choice doesn't win, then your and your, you, second, your choice second choice is, is added to the to the yeah. right? The bottom line is it's an anti-Republican. It's the worst thing that we could have exactly. here as a jungle primary. Got a seat right there for us. Can you hear or did you want to go in front? Right behind Marissa. The tradition for hundreds of years has been first past the post. You get the majority, you get one more than the other guys, you're in. Change it now. I mean, you guys are smart. But it's confusing. So you want to confuse the people of Hawaii, go through this. But that thing is still alive. And moving right along. Another pro Trump bill. You guys raise your hand up. If you're going to run for president in the state of Hawaii, you will give your tax return. What a bunch of crap. But I know. No, because you guys are jealous. jealous. They're jealous. Democrats are a bunch of jealous people. Not even the wrong way. A few years ago, there was a candidate who ran and they wanted him to disclose his birth certificate. 
all these southern states required him to, and he fought him in court constantly. And he never disclosed it. Yeah. And it was found you, you can't impose that on a, you can't impose a state regulation on President Obama. And I asked him, Casey, why won't you just show it? I mean, I would show it. Yeah. Like, why would you spend a dollar? He said, I don't know. Yeah. Now, that's Somebody part of what led to the mystery of the whole thing, because he fought it every step of the way. Okay, Bob, moving right along. GDP tax increase for schools. Rosie, oh, no. uh, Rosenlee. Uh, Corey Rosenlee lives. He's the one who did the Con Am. It got kicked out by the courts. Some people voted against it. He's not given up getting more taxation to teachers. Uh, what's the fate of that? Well, he's also my personal trainer, but. Uh, <laughs> not good. <laughs> not good. That's the humor coming out. Freddie is not a teacher. Oh, his, his weight class. <laughs> you don't know how to teach, right? That's, that, I think that would be good. Okay. Yeah. My, my sense is it was a yeah. fish to give the Democrats saying, you know, we're still for you teachers. Yeah. But yeah. in a way, we're agreement. not. GD tax increase now is not in the making. And next year's an election year, for sure it will not be in the making. They know what they're supposed yeah. to yeah. hide at that point. Um, as far as like the DOE, you know, they keep coming at us for more taxes, more taxes. <sighs> Legislatively, have we done anything to actually, it's been 46 years since they've had an audit. 46 years our DOE has not had an audit. They've had so an audit for the finances, but not yeah. the management or the well, kind of Well, we need to look the in the. We so we need that. So there's, yes. there's a bill actually that is going through right now. It's a Senate bill. And HSTA is against it because they said, well, it might find out any like inefficiencies, but you know, given our limited resources, we'll be wasting money. And whatever discrepancies they do find, it's not going to be enough to fund our schools anymore. Well, just look at, you know, just if we could look at the maintenance of the schools. Right around, look at the schools now, and then look at what we're paying in maintenance. It doesn't equal. Our schools aren't painted. The grass is higher than the fence. They're running. They're, I mean, they're falling apart. Our school systems, we should be ashamed of our school buildings. You're totally right. And the union still is against any sort of audit for the DOE. So that knocks us back. Because there's a bill for the city and county to take over the school system and make it county. Well, the Governor Lingle said that there should be a board of education by counties, smaller ones. Uh, that's probably going to die also. Uh, we have a very anxious uh, comment. Oh, yeah, because you know why? We have 600 teachers shortage, right? So if the money budgeted for DOE or Board of, Board of Education, where's that 600 teachers paycheck that's supposed to be distributed and they still want taxes? I don't understand. If we budgeted with that shortage of 600 teachers, where that pile of money for that shortage of teachers? Uh, the member on the finance committee? Yeah, let me answer that. When yeah. they say, so this is a source file, okay? When they say 600, we have a shortage of 600 certified, qualified teachers. Okay. Well, okay. So guy on top. I use this example. All the time. Graduate of MIT in physics. Taught physics at West Point. West Point, military, United States military. Yeah. Retired. Came back home to Hawaii. Going to teach. Went down to the DOE and said, "Here's my credentials." They said, "We're sorry. You're not qualified." This is true. So he could be teaching in school right now, and he's deemed unqualified. The guy who taught physics at West Point, he's unqualified because he didn't go to the UH and learn a gobbledygook of pedagogy, which means how to talk to a 12-year-old. Yep. So all these retired military nuclear yeah, physicists, exactly and all these guys who have mathematical hard skills are not qualified because they want to steer them through the puzzle palace down to the UH so they learn all the social gobbledygook and are desensitized and they come in there and they lost their real world. Anyway, so that's what Corey Rosalie's protecting. They're not qualified. These are people filling the roles, yeah. and they're doing okay. I got more on that because I have I have some some constituents that applied to be a teacher in IA at the middle school and the high school. Guess what? The requirements were: we need a letter for you to get from your representative on this district. It's just like, are you kidding me? They want something from the politicians, a recommendation, so they can get a job. So those fellows told me, you know, Marissa, we decided to move to Kapolei. Now I'm teaching the other teacher. They're all like math teachers, teaching at Kapolei uh, uh, Middle School. That's insane. Uh, our Department of Education, our Board of Education, asking so stupid things from these teachers. 
Okay, so that's the thing they need to change because they're they're pretty much he corrupting a, everything. He has a PhD, a doctor. He's not qualified. To I know. Teach. You look at this He's one. He's not qualified to teach in our school. He's got a doctor. Some of these teachers so, that want to be a teacher, they're asking like they're not they're not gonna get into those politicians. What do you mean? I have to pay okay. and get a letter? Zinga then kind. You're gonna have to move on. Unless okay. you guys, well, that's ten thirty already. Okay, sorry. Briefly, we also uh, there was legislation. I can't remember what bill it is, but we introduced a solution to, to uh, deal with the issue of our shortage of teachers. At UH Manoa, if we included in our GE classes, general education classes in order to get your bachelor's and all that kind of stuff, if we included one teacher methodology class, one teacher methodology class, every person that graduated from UH Manoa would be able at very best or very minimum to be able to substitute. Single, how could we get that? Exactly. Yeah. How could we do that? How could we do that? You can get on the Board of Regents or you can run for office? Yes, you should. Yeah. He's a lobbyist. This is like She's a lobbyist. You should be there. You've got to be able to implement these things. Oh, ideas yes. are not nothing. Your idea is very good. Cool no, this is a We recommend you, Inga. We do that. We can go to UH Manoa. My question is, how do you implement this solution? We can go to the we could go to UH Manoa and, and request okay. that they make that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got to try. Yes, I agree. Minutes, so, Gene, why don't you go through very quickly? Okay. Buy a styrofoam fan. Styrofoam, how many of you guys eat uh, plate lunches? No, we cook. They are in the process of yeah. saying no more styrofoam. <laughs> from now on, you're going to be it's carrying banana around, leaves. From now on, you're going to be carrying around a reusable bamboo spork. <laughs> you know what a spork is? Yes. That goes to the single-use straw band as well. Over 90% of the stuff in the great garbage patch comes from the four rivers of Asia. We make up like 2% of that of the pollution in the great garbage patch. Uh, a little out of homes program, you can talk about that. Sanctuary State is dead. Uh, yeah, we, we will talk in more detail. We got to move quickly. Uh, the, uh, you know, we left until 11 o'clock. Unless you got to know, yeah. we're, we're uh, just, yeah, we got some people. Can we discuss the rail? Uh, you guys want to say anything about the. Stop the rail right now. A lot of homes program. Okay. This is yeah, Go to the rail on it. Okay, the sanctuary state is the next slide, as you guys will know. It, the only thing that's missing is city and county didn't do it because of the rail, and they were going to fear the $700 million that they're holding back, and they're still holding back. And I've spoken, and he's spoken on the floor of the house, and we're going to do it. We should shut them out and get off the poking of the uh, president in the eyes if we're going to be able to be in the streets. Go ahead, Brett. I would, I would just like to add for everybody on the sanctuary state one. We need to still be aware because gut and replace is still yeah, it's, alive and well, and yeah, they good can point. easily try something else. They did it the other day, uh, and they're still doing it a number of times because it's the House competing against the Senate. The House doesn't like the Senate bill. They knock out the Senate one and stick in the House. Mm -hmm. just doing it here. Okay, the rail bill. Are we up to HB one one eight? Brevity. What's the short answer? Why did we vote for it? We were all fighting tooth and nail to make sure the rail was audited and it was in management in a very fiscal way that it was responsible, management was responsible. And then suddenly, what did the feds drop on us? What kind of subpoenas were they? Multiple subpoenas. Criminal. Multiple. They should go to jail anyway, long time ago. Yeah. So, basically, the auditor, who is a pit bull, all of you guys have heard of Les Condo, right? He is a pit bull. In fact, he was the legislative auditor and he was so aggressive to legislators, they pushed him to the state auditor. Because Suki was, and a lot of legislators were screaming, oh, he's going to choke us out. So the, the guy is genuine. He said, hey guys, back off. I didn't believe that because the day before, the city and county said, okay, we're going to postpone it. We're not going to cancel it. And I introduced the uh, amendment. It didn't go anywhere. But it was saying, hey guys, let's not cancel the audit, let's just put it on hold and we'll come back to another day. Obviously, the amendment didn't prevail, but it made a statement about, let's be serious about the audit, but if it's on time and on budget, if so, why and why not? Any points on the, on the real audit? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. 
issued four brand new contracts. One of them is simply to widen the sidewalks. Now, on April the 1st, for six months, you're going to have the Wapau Transit Center closed for six months. Now, if this is Farrington, this is Depot Road, this is Mokoyela, this is where Jack in the Box, okay? You see what my finger is right here? That's the Filipino Community Center. If buses coming in the Honolulu direction get off here, disabled people are going to have to walk three or four blocks to get on the bus. Now, this is going to be disrupted for six months. Now, not only that, you know where they got the fences up underneath the rail to keep people from uh, jaywalking? They're going to pull all that down and plant hundreds of trees. And what I said was, wait a minute, that's a make work project. First, you've got to plant the trees, you've got to water them, you've got to trim them, you've got to sweep up the rubbish. They're out of control. I'm just telling you this because I feel that if I'm a representative of the Wapahu neighborhood board, I have to get this message out. And guess why I'm here? They're not telling the public. And they're not telling the bus. The bus company knows nothing about this. I'm just sharing this because there's, there's a scam somewhere. I don't know where it's at. But if, if we get three federal indictments from, from the uh, federal government to uh, ask for audit, then, and they turn around and issue four so contracts, I've told you about two yeah, of them. That's the, the Wapu no, train. I'm just sharing because you need to know. Thank you for serving on the neighborhood board. That's where we say the same. All politics are local. That's a very important issue. Mm. Uh, hopefully, you're, who's your city council person? Uh, uh, Ron Manoa, and I'm on the ocean side of Farrington. Marissa, is this relevant to that one or something else? She's got no, I'm on a you want to comment on? Yeah, I just want to let you know it's already in the U.S. Congress. So we're already dealing with the U.S. Congress because it's federal money that was given to this rail project. Some of them go to jail, I'll tell you right now. So U.S. Congress is already working on it. So the shoe is in the air it. or it's in the process of dropping. We don't know exactly how it's going to come out. But uh, a lot of things are in motion. And let's not even mention what's going on with the KLO House. And what's going on with the, you know, DHHL has a... Uh, has a <coughs> Well, even our native homeland is the fair issue. order. Uh, did we see the video? Uh, for those who want to stay after we finish up. Uh, oh, okay. The, the, this, okay, we're going to... I want to have a kumbaya moment of unity because some of you, yeah. maybe you're not close enough or haven't been to the legislature but don't, don't see the process. We are sometimes accused of, okay, you vote 75, 80% with the Democrats. Well, the reality is it's a structural reality. Most of the bills are, as you can see on the right here, shall we, what are some of these things? Uh, should we give a small, uh, a relating to unit use permits for the small boat harbor? Much of this, you guys are business people, it's management issues, stuff that we get down and we micromanage it into the weeds. 75% of those are either appropriations or management issues or technical non-substance. Believe it or not, that, that's the boring part of being a legislator. I thought when we come in, it's going to be like the Scopes monkey trial. We're going to argue, we're going to have for and against, and we're going to vote it. And, and, rah, 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 and, but it's not. But if you go to another 10 or 15%, you get partisan issues on taxation, you get partisan issues on home rule, you get partisan issues on size of government. And then maybe 5 to 10%, you get really hardcore ideological abortion immigration, other kinds of things that say, oh my God, you, you must be a Democrat if you're for this or you're for against that stuff. So no, uh, fellow Republicans, this is the way the structure of it. And the way Bob says it, well, look, when you got 45 out of 51 people are Democrat, all the bills are going to be Democrats because they're going to hear their own bills. But in terms of the substance of them, know that your legislature does a lot of babysitting for what's going on in the state of Hawaii. And when you say, hey, Republicans should do this, Republicans should do that, Number one, those are a rare point of the view, a rare point of what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's something that we need. How many of you guys showed up to testify? A few of you. Some of you have done it in the party who have done it online, but the Democrat Party submits testimony. The, the Democrats show up. We got so many different groups. Well, do presence is very, very important. So as we wrap up. This is a kumbaya moment, and I want to mention other things related to the party. Do, Go ahead, Kyle. As far as our representatives, do you vote on the party platform when you vote? I remember, when you speak of party representatives, 
I and my district are totally against the rail. His district is for the rail. So when you say for the party, okay. you guys don't vote for us. Yeah. We vote in our districts. You yes. gotta understand that. You guys are not the governors of who, who put us in office. Some of you behave and write but stuff. Weren't you? If you put us in office, you don't put us in office, you're to recruit, you're to train, you're to fund and work for us. You're not the governors. Go no, ahead. sir, you're supposed to work for us. No. That's no. a no. big no. difference. Get elected is the issue. Get elected. Not for Hold on. Not all. Hold on. This if, if I can, just so, just so we can, because because everybody wonders what is a what is our role as party members and then what is the role of the elected officials. I didn't vote for Bob. I didn't vote for Jean. I voted I didn't vote for Cynthia, I didn't vote for Lauren. I voted for Val because she happens to be in my district. The purpose of the political party and all of us working in the political party is to nominate candidates for office and get as many of them elected as possible. So we have to um, bring people to achieve control of the government. We have to develop policies that are favorable to us. And we have to organize and persuade voters to elect. In other words, the party is not the government. In fact, if you look in the Constitution, not a single mention of a political party. So what do we do? So what do we do? We need to, in order to win, in order to get more Bob and more Jean, because, because I agree with them. We, they don't work for me. They work for the people that elected them, which is, I don't live in Ever Beach. Now, 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 hold on, hold on. So, so how do we do that? We want to appeal to as many people as possible in order to get as many Republicans as possible. I mean, you see well, it nationally, hold on, you see it nationally, even, even, President Trump's old Republicans in the Senate are voting against him. It is the reality of politics. But hold on. So how do we do that? We do so by stating our goals in a very general way so that voters are attracted to a broad philosophy, right? So a broad philosophy. Republicans' broad philosophy support business, conservative views on social issues, and size of government. Democrats. They love labor, they want more government, they want, you know, minorities. Okay, so the broad, we're not going to agree on every issue, or you can vote on a one or two issue candidate. In other words, the fighting that we do every day, so why do I, why do I, the fighting we do every day is hard because we're not going to vote and agree on every single issue and who is more conservative than the other. Our goal, again, is to appeal to the broadest base possible. So we are not a policy-making organization, but we do take a stand. We fought for a one-page, we fought, hold on, come, we fought for a one-page platform, change a one-page platform to a very substantive issue-based platform. But if one person doesn't agree with one of those issues, we have to look at it as a broad, a broad philosophy of which you identify and which you support. So if we are working on nominating people for office, supporting people for office, that's what we have to look at. Because otherwise we're never gonna make right. that never difference. Okay, let's okay. um, <laughs> first of all <laughs> wait, 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 yeah. We're we're still we're still no, no, having no, a I'm just saying slide. so that we can so that Last we can slide. look at you know when people say, Oh, that you're working he, he got voted in and will continue to get voted in by the people in his district. And Gene, too, whether we agree with them or not, I don't He was vote voted in as a Republican on no, the Republican platform. No, that's, that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. He, uh, evidently, she doesn't he listen was, very he well. He was not no, voted no, in. He was yeah. voted in by his people. And many people, many people. Are you going to call me a kook again? No, no, many people, hold on, please. Many people don't necessarily pay attention to that designation. We flip, the same district flips all the time. Now, I am a strong Republican, a conservative, and I want us to have the best broad philosophy, philosophy that will bring people over. That's why we're looking at different coalitions. That's why we're, that's why we're pulling in the faith-based community who continue to vote Democrat despite many of the social issues. So there's something that we, there's something that has to, that we can do 
that we need to help build those coalitions. That's what we're doing every day. We're not going to fight for who has the best, most, uh, you know, the best philosophy out there. We are, again, we have a broad philosophy that is represented, published, voted on, not only by the state committee, it was voted on by the convention, the, the, uh, the platform, that seven-page page platform, which, yeah, which does have a rail, against a rail. Yes. It does say against it's a rail. It's a rail. Yes, it does. It does say fiscal responsibility. It does say statements about life. That is our broad philosophy. But yes. If, but if his and his people are voting him in. And our chair is supposed to counsel oh, our legislation. Wait, 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 hold on. Just a second. Okay. Look, we got a presentation to finish. Let us finish okay. and then we can argue and debate. The point is, the party has some political dysphoria. Some of the identity that some people have, and this is a very controversial slide, and let me finish it. And then well, I'll I don't have anything to do with this slide, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is like, like you said, the we're party, not going to throw Bob out because for the real. We have... <laughs> We have the party chair of the of the country coming to visit, and she would have to throw out 13 senators who voted against our president. Oh yeah, they're going to be targeted. But the they are, they, but the when people who vote are running. They're going to be targeted. Okay, their people will vote them out. But it is. Yes. that's not the job of the, you know, the volunteer yeah. chair. Gene, I know you're trying to move on. I know you're trying to move on, but this Excuse issue me. that you're talking needs to be resolved before you jump into this. If people don't, first of all, why am I being recorded? Uh, I gave permission earlier. Uh, because yeah. because the other people on the other island can see what you have to say. And people who recorded and snuck it and gave it to Hira, and we didn't know about it. At least this one we know is being recorded because we gave okay. permission. Well, there's only two oh, days' notice for the meeting. Something. Two days' and notice for the meeting. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Anyways, what's important here, and it was totally ignored by about four people in here, is they don't understand that. Wait, 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 wait,
Senator Kemp. I agree. We don't have that power. He works for his people. Right. Right. Like them, he works but we can vote somebody against them if we think they're so out of touch. Wait, I, understand. I understand that they got to vote the way they vote on the floor. <laughs> I have not attacked a single one of our Republicans. You have not protected but a I single have, one. What? But I haven't. Gene, that is I not true. spoke out against any single one of them, but... I can't speak out to support them on their I, votes. That's their decision. They have to explain it to their but members. We have to explain, we have to tell our members how we exactly. would like them to get involved and act. So and if I may, support. I, so and we are so, in violent agreement. And so, you know, this whole thing about protecting the, the, the legislatures, that's not my job. Okay, so we That's are, not our job. Right. That's not our job. So how many times do we, do I say, yay, caucus? Yeah, surely, right? yes. Do I ever do that? They go, yes. well, why are we not saying this? Because that's not my job. Exactly. My job is when we have a caucus, when we have a caucus unity on an issue that we all agree on, right we'll see on. a press release, we'll see everything. Right but on. But there are going to be things that we True. don't. But the reality <laughs> is that while Bob is Republican and Gina is Republican, their constituency is different. Right? That's what we have to. That's what we have to deal with. And so you and I are exactly the same. Well, why are you not saying this against the uh, against the, uh, caucus? Or why are you not saying this for the caucus? When we have a caucus, when we have a caucus unanimous thing that is in line with our platform, you'll see. I will be the first person, right? Do I write a press release and I send it out to the to the folks because that's what's appropriate. Otherwise, the sniping at Bob didn't vote the way we wanted him to. Let, let, let me say this. What I have a problem is I, I, I'm silence when we are attacked. You guys should be defending us. Whether you agree with our issue or not, you only defend people when it's your issue. We are a party. We have a penalty of issues. You guys should be defending us, not piling on and allowing all this kick-ass stuff, okay, making the Republicans look like idiots. So if you're not going to help us, Brett, you're against it. If you're not for us, you're against us. And you're only for us when the issues fit. Because when our freshman has... Wait just a minute. The people you're, 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 you're missing my point. No, no you're missing the point. You've got a personal agenda against Brett because he wouldn't do your job. supposed to end in civility. I would request you turn this off because this is... Your parents don't fight in front of the parents don't fight in front of the children, but we've is got that to what you think about? and get Hira the hell out of this party. No, no that's the way you do, you're gonna have okay. You're not you gonna have, have permission. You, want, you no longer have permission to do this. 